Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an amazing modified version of Manjaro for the Raspberry Pi 4. This is known as Monkajaro by Monkapi, and he's done a lot of retro Pi builds for the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, and the Raspberry Pi 4. I never knew he did distros like this, and I gotta say I'm absolutely blown away by this. Basically, what we have here is a modified version of Manjaro for the Raspberry Pi 4, and this is really awesome. He's got a lot of stuff preloaded in here. And I actually ran across this this morning by accident. I was checking out YouTube and I ran across a video by Lee PSP Video. Right here, Monkajaro Manjaro 20.04. Then I started looking into his YouTube channel and noticed he posts a lot of stuff about the Raspberry Pi 4. He's got some other stuff down uh, that was a little while ago. But most of this stuff is on the Raspberry Pi 4 and he's got some really awesome videos over here. So you definitely need to check his channel out. I'll leave a link for it in the description and at the end of this video. So here it is. This is Monkajaro. I'm running this on a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. Now when you download the image and install it to your SD card, it does come overclocked to two gigahertz on the CPU and 600 megahertz on the GPU. You'll also need to run Gparted and extend your partition on that SD card, but it's really easy to do. So what I've done here is overclock a little more. I went to 700 megahertz on the GPU and 2.1 gigahertz on the CPU. As a desktop operating system goes for the Raspberry Pi 4, this runs just as well as any of the other ones out there. I've had really good luck with it. But I gotta say, one of my favorite parts about Monkajaro are the pre-installed applications, mainly the emulators. If we go to games here, you can see we have Stella, SNES 9X, Scum VM, RetroArch with a ton of working cores ready to go, MGBA, MAME, Hatari, DOSBox, and we even have the Dolphin emulator. And right here on the desktop, standalone PPSSPP. So if you're into retro gaming, but you still want a desktop experience on your Raspberry Pi 4, this is a great option. And you could always build something like this. Of course, you can go through and install all of this stuff yourself, but it's already set up, ready to go, and you can download the image and install it within minutes without any setup at all. So in this video, I did want to test the Dolphin emulator. I also wanted to test PSP, but I know a lot of people might just want to use this as a desktop operating system. So we'll just head over to Firefox real quick. Everything does load up pretty quickly. And you got to remember that the drivers for the Raspberry Pi 4 aren't ready yet. Manjaro will get better and faster over time. But for right now, if you wanted to run this as a daily operating system, you could do so. So we do have Firefox. I'm going to open up YouTube over here. And I mean, we also have a ton of other stuff pre-installed. So if we go to applications, we have our full office suite built in, LibreOffice. We have GIMP for image editing. Uh, FileZilla is ready to go. We even have everybody's favorite media center built in, ready to go right out of the box. And I gotta say, I've actually been having a really good time with this operating system. I'm already a big fan of Manjaro on the Raspberry Pi. This is just icing on top of the cake. We already have everything we really need pre-installed right here. So here's YouTube running. Now you might know that uh, 720p is probably as good as we're going to get with the Raspberry Pi 4 right now. If we go up to 1080p, you will notice some frame dips. I mean, it'll play, and we're still getting frame drops here. If I go to Stats for Nerds, you'll see we've already dropped 131 frames. If I give it a little time to buffer out, it'll just keep dropping. Now, if you really don't pay attention to it, you could watch these videos at 720p just fine. And yes, by the way, sound is working with YouTube. Sound is working with this whole system here. I just didn't have it turned on with my game capture, but I will turn it on when we start testing all of these games here. Now, even though we have Dolphin pre-installed, Go down here to Applications, Games, we got Dolphin. Doesn't mean it's going to run at full speed, and your best bet is to turn your resolution down to 720p. You definitely want as much out of this as you can get, and even at 720p, this still looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and swap over right now. I have the desktop set at 1080p, but if I go here and just type in Display, we can set that resolution. I'll go to, oh, I do not want that. I want 1080p, regular. So we're now running the desktop and everything at 720p. Uh, even YouTube might perform a little better this way, but we're gonna test out some emulators. First up, we're gonna go with PPSSPP. This is the standalone version. I'm using an Xbox One controller. 
And here it is. I've gone full screen with it. I'll list the settings of each game that I'm testing on screen so you know what's going on. So first up, we have Family Guy. I do have the FPS listed in the top right hand corner. 2x resolution, no frame skip. This is a relatively easy game to run with this emulator on low end devices. So yeah, stuff like this is going to work just fine. So let's step it up a bit. So here's Tekken Dark Resurrection at 1x with no frame skip, no hacks, it does run at full speed. But when I bumped it up to 2x, I did have to turn on frame skip. And I'd rather run it like this, even though I don't like frame skip at all. But going from 1x to 2x makes a world of difference in the graphics department, so I'd much rather run it like this. And it's perfectly playable at 30 FPS. And seeing how I had to use frame skip with even Dark Resurrection, I was sure that God of War Chains of Olympus wasn't going to run at full speed. 1x resolution, frame skip set to 1, we're at 30 FPS, not too bad, but we're still using frame skip. Overall, I gotta say that the newest RetroPie build and the standalone version of PPSSPP that's built in with that definitely performs better than this. But then again, if you're looking for a desktop solution and you don't mind using frame skip, you should be able to play most of the PSP games that are compatible with the emulator. Now before we move on to the Dolphin emulator, which I'm pretty sure is going to be slow, I did want to show you RetroArch. In order to get different controllers working, you will have to go to Online Updater and update your Joypad profile. You can do that from the keyboard, but my controller is now working in RetroArch. And we got a ton of cores. So if you want to do Game Boy Advance, Atari, Neo Geo, FBA, NES, SNES, Sega Saturn, I don't think it's going to run well on this. PlayStation 1 should run at full speed, then you can do that with this build. You're just going to load a game with the provided core and you'll be good to go. So for lower end stuff, yes, this is going to work fine. Let's move over to the Dolphin emulator. So right now for graphics, OpenGL, obviously, VSync, show FPS, uh, compile shaders before starting. I'm sitting at the native resolution of 640 by 528 and remember I have set my full resolution to 720. Like I said, I don't think we're going to get full speed out of any of this stuff we're going to test, but I still wanted to check it out. But let's go ahead and test this out anyway. First game I'm going to test is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. So yeah, straight off the bat, this is running at about half speed on the Raspberry Pi 4. I have experimented with windowed and full screen mode. We're at full screen mode with this game, but the next games will be in windowed mode. There was no difference in performance whatsoever. Here we have Wind Waker, and this originally ran at 30 FPS on the GameCube. We're at half speed, I mean 13, 14, 15 FPS, I have seen it go up to 18 in some cases, but overall this is still very unplayable on the Raspberry Pi 4. Soul Calibur 2 originally ran at 60. This isn't a super hard game to emulate and it works well on lower end x86 CPUs, but this little arm chip is just really struggling with the Dolphin emulator, and I expected it would. And finally, I did want to throw a 2D game in here, but this seems to be the worst performer of everything that I've tested. I mean, those 3D games were working a lot better on the Pi 4 than this one here. So yeah, going into this, I was pretty sure that Dolphin was still going to be slow on the Raspberry Pi 4, and to tell you the truth, I don't think we'll ever get every game running at full speed on the Pi 4 in its lifetime, maybe on the Raspberry Pi 5, 6, or 7, but right now, we're just working with such a low-end SoC in this thing, it's really hard to push those games at full speed with the emulator. But overall, I have been enjoying using Monk Jaro, and basically we just have Manjaro with a ton of stuff installed, and that's totally fine with me. Sometimes I just don't want to sit down and install everything again on an SD card, and flashing an image like this allows me to get up and running very quickly, and I really like that idea. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you want to get your hands on this, I'm going to leave a link to Lee PSP's video. He's got a YouTube channel over there. I'll leave a link to his channel and the video he did on this. He has a download link in the description. 
If anybody knows if Monkapie has a YouTube channel or something like that that he wants added in the description, let me know in the comments below. I did search around a little bit. I didn't really come up with anything except for a GitHub that was pretty much empty, and I'm not even sure if that's really his GitHub or not. But if you do know if Monkapie has a YouTube channel or anything like that, let me know and I'll add it to the description. This is actually really awesome and I can't wait to see what he does next. And if you want to see anything else running in this operating system or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.